This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this I'm going to talk about the most efficient and the most performant JSON serializers in .NET. Now there's many, many, many JSON serializers and as I'm making this video, new of them are popping up. And the reason for that is .NET 5 and then now .NET 6 and more and more .NET versions are actually coming out with more improvements. So these things are actually changing all the time. So the numbers are only relevant for the date of the release of this video. One year down the road, this might be very, very different. But the main idea behind the optimizations and how they achieve to be so fast will probably be the same. So we're going to observe that, run some benchmarks and see where we are. Of course, the fastest or the most efficient in memory doesn't mean the best. It really comes down to what feature set you're looking for. And we're going to talk about that as part of this video as well. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let me show you my benchmark setup. And we're going to just focus on the benchmarking here because JSON serialization from an object to a string and vice versa is actually a very simple process. It's usually one line of code. So let me show you the main class that I have. This is the GitHub user model so that's what we are going to be using and in terms of libraries that I'm going to be using I have auto fixture and then benchmark.net for the benchmark and then auto fixture for the creation of uh, the data for that user randomizing it and then I have basically four things I'm testing first of course I have the system.text.json which is not a library it's just built in the framework nowadays uh, but then I also have gel which is using sigil behind the scenes to actually emit IL code to generate a very, very efficient JSON serialization from and to code. Uh, of course, I have newsofsoft.json, not only the most popular JSON serialization library, but also the most downloaded NuGet package ever with more than a billion downloads. And then UTF-8 JSON. I don't know if you've heard of all those uh, libraries. These are the ones I've personally used. That's why I'm testing them. and. I feel very familiar with them, so I should be able to give a good perspective on them. So in terms of the code that I have here, I have the auto fixture pre-initialized and then a user pre-initialized for uh, all of those tests, so they're sharing it. And then I have the user as text, which means I just pre-initialized one of those um, user objects. And then I populate it with some random values and I'm going to be using that on the deserialization. So first we have serialization where we get the object and we serialize it to a string meaning we convert a poco effectively a plain old clr object to text which is this and then I have the opposite operation where i have the text which is a const all the way up here and i serialize that to the oh sorry i deserialize that to the user itself i'm not doing anything fancy in any of those scenarios and they all use the normal setters, no constructors, no nothing mixed into this. I just want the bare bones to see what, without any utilization of complicated features, how they would perform. But before I run those benchmarks, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions of people like you and me come together to take the learning experience to the next level. As someone who has solely focused on sharpening their back-end software engineering skills over the years, I feel that my front-end skills and anything related to web design is holding me back from creating my own full-stack projects. Skillshare has thousands of classes on web development, web design and UX for all levels, so you can rest assured that you will definitely find something to learn from. I personally had an interest in sharpening my CSS skills and Harry Roberts' modern CSS class about writing better, cleaner and more scalable code is an amazing class which I took to do so. With an annual subscription that is less than $10 a month, you gain access to thousands of ad-free classes curated specifically for learning with new premium classes launching all the time. The first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So get ready to take that next step in your creative journey and click that link in the description for your free trial. So that's what my uh, program.cs looks like, just runs the benchmarks. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this as release and I'm going to press run and it should now start running all of those cases. Now we have eight benchmarks here and they're going to run thousands or hundreds of thousands of times. So it will take a while for me to actually uh, get to the bottom of this, but for you it will just be a click. So the results are back and let's take a look at those. Um, and as you can see, I mean, this is quite hard to visualize, but anything under this is the deserialization. So let's not look at them for now. Let's focus on the first 
4 here. So Newtonsoft, as expected, is the slowest one by 4 microseconds. And to be honest, Newtonsoft was never designed to be the most efficient or the most fast. It was designed to be a feature-rich experience, and if you are to use it, you probably won't use it for performance or memory allocation. And that's totally fine because it's a great, great library. And you actually see the same theme on deserialization. It is the slowest and allocates the most memory. But that's fine because performance is contextual and you might not need the fastest possible way to do things or the least memory allocative, the thing that allocates less memory, but you just might want the most feature-rich thing and that is why people are using that. Now let's go to the fastest one for serialization and that is UTF-8 JSON in my results and the reason for that is pretty interesting and also locates uh, the least memory alongside the system.text.json. So why is that? Well, a string in C-sharp is a UTF-16 entity while everything that goes through networking, well the majority of them anyway, uh, those need to be UTF-8 strings, meaning you can actually optimize that in a UTF-8 way and get both memory and speed out of that optimization. And in fact, if I was to run stream benchmarks as well, UTF-8 JSON would perform great there because you wouldn't even have to convert it back into a string, which is UTF-16. So if you're looking for absolute best performance in serialization, UTF-8 JSON would give you that. That being said, system.text.json is the second fastest one for that, and it actually is the fastest one for deserialization as well. Again, all of those are looking at the default behavior, and that might be different depending on what you're doing, how big your object is, how small it is, how much nesting it has, but for the bare bones, bare minimum observation, this is what you get. And as you can see, both system.text.json and also UTFA JSON don't have a Gen 1 uh, garbage collection um, on the deserialization. Of course, that being said, system.text.json is actually more memory efficient than UTF-8 JSON. Now, Jill is actually on the slow end or the slow-ish end anyway for serialization on 3.7 microseconds and closer to Newtonsoft than it is system.text.json or UTF-8 JSON. And it actually has also the biggest memory allocation for serialization, but deserialization is actually very memory efficient and it's relatively fast. It's almost half the Newtonsoft and around the same as uh, UTF-8 JSON and system.text.json is actually the fastest. So what can we make out of this? Well, truth to be told, this picture, this performance that you see right in front of you doesn't really mean much. It really comes down to what your application needs to do. Do you need to handle 20,000 requests per second? like or like 50,000 requests per second do you care more about memory allocations do you care more about performance and speed like those are the questions you should be asking you shouldn't just blindly go and pick utf-8 json just because it's the fastest and very memory efficient because if it doesn't support one feature that you need on the serialization or deserialization front then what's the point of having something fast just to say it's fast it doesn't doesn't make sense so in my opinion whether you're going to use newtonsoft.json which is insanely feature rich and will do basically anything you want at the cost of speed and memory location or whether you're going to use utf-8 json or system.txt or json or jill which are, which are more a uh, feature restricted but very very fast memory efficient well depending on what you go with um, it's completely up to you i've seen scenarios where people actually will use multiple ones for them and they're going to use for example uh, utf-8 json for serialization and then system.txt or json for deserialization to get the best of both worlds but to me that's overkill but again this comes down to what you're doing for the apps i've seen it yes it makes sense for my blazer application it probably doesn't make sense that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making these videos possible if you want to support me as well you're gonna find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well and i'll see you in the next video keep coding